Would you please tell us your name? Robert Yerger. Okay. What have you brought to the harvest today? I brought a uh, 55 program from uh, Homecoming. It was a program that uh, it was Susquehanna had not won a game in two and a half years. And that broke their losing streak, which was quite a thing. Quite a thing. Um, can you show it to yeah. the camera? Yeah. Anyway, that uh, up until that time, Susquehanna football was on the decline. And then I would have been about 49 or 48. Coach Stagg Jr. got his father, who was Coach Stagg Sr., to come here from California to help him sort of rebuild the program. And they were successful to the point in 51 they were undefeated. And um, Coach Stagg Sr. at that time was, I'm going to say 90, 92 years old, something like that. And, uh, and then the next year they declined a little bit. And then the next year they lost every game, and the next year they lost every game. And then when I was a freshman, we lost every game. This is when I was a sophomore, and we only won one game, which was a big deal because it broke the losing streak. But um, Coach Stagg Sr. had been at Chicago for 45 years as a head coach and has uh, the third uh, the record for the most victories in high school, I mean in college football. Bear Bryant is ahead of him and Joe Paterno and that's the only two. And then he was third. But then when he came here, they tried to add the victories that he had here to his itinerary, but they wouldn't let him because he was listed as a co-coach instead of a head coach. So if they would have let his victories stand here, he would he would have had that record for a little longer, and then he would have lost it to Bear Bryant eventually, which was in Alabama. So, but um, when he uh, when Coach Stagg was here, he lived up uh, uh, in the area which is now the uh, Weber Chapel. That was there was cottages up there, and all of the professors and all the administrators lived in those cottages, and. Um, he would come down in the morning and and do his thing and then coach the team and then in the winter he would go back to Chicago. He, would, he didn't live here in the winter time. And then he'd come back in the fall and then he would live, that, he did that for four or five years. But the thing about him was uh, when, when, when game day came about, he would come down in the morning and get everything organized and when the team went out on the field, take the field before the game to warm up or whatever, he would do a lap with the, with the team at, in his early and mid-90s. And then uh, after 53, he went back to California and continued to coach at uh, College of Pacific well into his late 90s, and he died when he was like 102, something like that. But his son stayed here. He coached, uh, I played for him in 54, and then in 55 he retired and was still the athletic director. And Coach Stagg stayed here another four or five years, and then he retired. And then he moved to, to Chicago, and uh, he come back. He come back in 81 for a Stagg reunion. And then he come back again in, in about 88 for another uh, stag reunion and then uh, passed away, I'm going to say probably uh, maybe 15 years ago. He was 98 or 99 when he died. So, But um, they were in an institution. I mean, the, the, everybody was in, involved in college football and the nation knew who they were, which was kind of neat. It was, uh, and so that's uh, the part of uh, the, the, uh, the university that a lot of people don't know and a lot of them don't care, but there are a lot of people that, that still do care about it and uh, 
and it's 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 a neat thing. It's um, tradition. The tradition that they used to use here have all gone by the wayside. I mean, a lot of things they used to do. They used to have pep rallies at night with bonfires and the night before the game, and they had these uh, traditions that they used to do on game day. That's all gone. And uh, but you know, like that's what happens. You know, progress. So that's uh, that's what I brought. How did you acquire this item? Pardon me. How did you acquire this item? How did I acquire what? Acquire it. Oh, I was on the team. My name's on there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. My, um, I have uh, all the home programs from '55 and '54, and then I have a couple that uh, we when we go to, we played at Wagner College when I was a sophomore, and they brought programs down after the game, and everybody got one. The visiting team, and I still have those, but. Uh, most of this stuff is all gone. I just kept them in the folders and they're in pristine shape. But the neat thing about it is to look through them and see the ads for the, for the businesses that are all gone and have been swallowed up. And uh, some of the stuff, that they, they printed these and they, they always had the, the fight song and the alma mater and uh, a lot of the stuff from the week before, right up from the game the week before, and highlights from the game that's going to be played. And uh, at the time, this was a quarter, I think. Yeah, it was 25 cents. <laughs> but uh, so that's, I just kept them over the years. And, and when uh, Jim said they were going to do this thing, I thought I'd bring it out. And they're going to just photostat it, I guess. and put it in the archives on, on DVD or CD, and then I'll get it back, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's why I brought it out. Yep. What was it like after this big win? Uh, don't, I don't remember. Uh, the only thing I remember <coughs> about it was we were out of timeouts, and if you call the timeout, and still today, and you don't have one, you get like a 15-yard penalty and loss it down. It's a double whammy because you stop the game. So uh, with like less than a minute left, quarterback who was one of my best friends told uh, the one tackle, he said, on the next play, Bishop, you're going to get hurt. What do you mean? He said, don't get up. Just stay there. Don't get up. And Bishop said, why? He said, because we have to stop the clock. We, we have to not run another play. We can't lose this game. So Bishop laid there, and I don't, I don't remember the whole situation, but I, they stopped the clock, and we got penalized and lost it down, but we had one more play, and, and on that play we scored a touchdown and won the game. So I, I didn't even know the story about it until, now this is how many years ago? 60? Right, yeah. I didn't know the story about that until about a month ago, when Bishop he's he was he's an executive. He was an executive with uh, Hershey Foods in Her Hershey, and um, he was we were having a beer at the brew pub after the game, and and he told me that story. I never heard it before. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have won that game, and we yeah. would have gone into three years without winning the game. So. Yeah, it was it was interesting. So, how did you hear about the harvest? Uh, the guy that one of the guys out there that that does the the digital transfers mm -hmm. from uh, film to uh, or from VHS to DVD uh, was a friend of Jim Campbell. He used to be alumni director here, and he said that they had some films that they were going to show. So we come out and looked at them, and they were films from '54 and '53. And uh, so I come out, and and then he told me, he said, "If you have anything, bring it out," and told us when it was going to be. So, and then my friend brought a lot of stuff, local stuff, out to um, give them to if they wanted to look at it. Most of it is just town stuff, old factories and uh, the old schools and. Uh, some of the things that used to go on around here that are 
people forgotten about. People are all gone that knew about them. And so if if you're if you're over if you're if you're under seventy, you wouldn't know any of this stuff because you wouldn't have heard about it. So I don't know what they're going to do with it, but whatever it is, it's you know it'd be fine.